Um, I think this is a very unlikely outcome for cyber capabilities. I, I, I sat around and tried to come up with some very science fiction scenarios where some cyber capability caused some sort of unnecessary suffering to a combatant. And I just decided that, that at some point I was getting very silly. And so I quit that exercise because I think it's very difficult to, to think of something where um, a, a cyber capability in and of itself will cause unnecessary suffering to combatants. But that brings us to the third question. And that's whether or not these items are targetable. Um, there is this duty in, in the, the international law of armed conflict to distinguish between military objectives and civilians and civilian property. So when we're talking about a spectrum here, um, when we're talking about people, you have combatants. They're defined. They're the people that are part of the military. They wear uniforms. They carry arms openly. And you have civilians. Um, you can't shoot civilians. Civilians are off limits. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no such thing as collateral damage. If civilians. A, 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 you know, a, a small fraction of civilians uh, get injured and hurt or killed. That, that's acceptable. Collateral damage is okay, but you don't want it to be, um, you, you don't want it to be disproportional, and you don't want to target civilians. So you don't bomb uh, the city center where people are living. You want to bomb the places where the military is. So this idea is that you should distinguish between these things, um, and, and the same goes for property. Property gets less protection than the people, but the same goes for it. You don't want to just start targeting civilian property. You don't shoot, uh, bomb homes, you bomb military bases. Um, and, and the ICJ has stated that this is an intransgressible principle. Um, and I have doubts as to whether intransgressible is actually a word, but it's in the opinion. Um, my word does not uh, recognize it, it's a spelling error. Um, so civilians are all non combatants. And civilian objects are everything that's not a military objective. Military objectives are items that by their nature, location, purpose, or use um, sustain the warfighting effort or contribute to the military effort. So civilian objects can become military objectives. So if you have a pencil factory, the military comes in and says, you know what, we want you to start making AK-47s. Well, that has now become, despite the fact that it is a civilian manufacturing plant, it has become a military objective. So, so along this property line, there's a spectrum where, where things can change. Now, I think the, the question here for this targetability and this, this ability to distinguish um, is, is very interesting for cyber capabilities. Um, and it's because there's this idea that the, the internet's a network, right? It's a civilian network, though. And so a lot of these capabilities are going to be traveling over civilian networks. And, and you have military networks, of course. Those are obviously targetable. That is a military objective. Um, but when does a civilian network become a military objective? At what point is the military using a civilian network to the point that it becomes a military objective? Um, and, and you know, the one that you see in the news all the time is they're going to come in. It's a quote. They will, they'll hack in. They'll shut down the dams. They'll shut down the, the power grid. It'll be chaos. The whole, the whole nation will collapse. Um, and, and there's a very, I think, a very real question about the targetability of power grids. If a power grid is serving a military base, yeah, you can shut that down because that's helping the military base work. If the power grid is running downtown Manhattan, we have a whole other question because that leads to a humanitarian crisis and you're not supposed to target civilians. And so the question becomes, you know, at what point are these things targetable? And I think that's a, a very interesting question when we're talking about the technology itself. When you talk about botnets, which just infect whatever computer they can get on, and, and they grab hold and they operate from there. Or viruses, or Trojans, or any of these technologies, they, they sort of spread organically across the web, and they're not really concerned with what is a military uh, object and what's not, and what's civilian. Um, and, and so there's a real question here about the the technological end of what is targetable when we're talking about cyber capabilities, which leads me to Stuxnet. Um, and, and no matter who you think did Stuxnet, it's a great technological example of a targetable um, cyber capability. It could have infected all of those, you know, Stuxnet was the, the, the virus that went in and it, it, there were these boxes, they're computers, but they, they sort of sit in power plants and, and the ones in this case were in the Iranian um, nuclear power facility, and it infected those. And when it was triggered, it shut down the Iranian nuclear facility. Now, Stuxnet could have infected all of these mass-produced boxes everywhere, 
But it, th this program, and it was a very sophisticated program, was built such that it only affected the ones in the Iranian nuclear facility. So it was targetable. Um, it only affected what it was meant to affect. And so that's what this legal review is about for these weapons, because you have a reviewer saying, he's going through these three questions, and he gets to this question of whether it can distinguish between the military objectives and civilian objectives. And so I think that that, that military um, reviewer is going to have to have, ask very real questions. Now, the, 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 what I'm talking about here is really the pre-operational review. This is before a weapon goes operational. Um, most capabilities, most weapons will actually pass this review. Um, there are very few that don't. And because the benchmark is whether it can be used legally um, and, and not whether it can be used illegally. And so the, the example that I like to use for my students is a machine gun. We all know that machine gun is essentially the basic tool for military um, engaged in hostilities. Well, if I have a machine gun and you are a combatant, it is legal for me to shoot you with the machine gun. Now, let's say that there is one combatant out in the audience. I can't just spray the civilians there. That is an illegal use of that machine gun in the laws of armed conflict. So there, there are, are these questions, and, and that's a very basic one, but, but there are, when, when targeting is done, um, there are strate uh, strategists in the room, there are JAGs in the room, there are, are a whole panoply of people in the room that are discussing whether or not this particular use of that particular weapon is illegal. Um, and that's after the fact. This is after this, this pre-operational review. But I think that it raises some very real questions um, about what um, can and cannot be done with these capabilities. Now, there are a ton of law of international armed conflicts that go with this. Um, there is this idea of attribution. How do we know that a state did it? Um, I don't even begin to address these, these items in my paper. Um, proportionality, what is proportionality? If you shut down a power grid, is it proportional to, to put a missile down your smokestack? Um, these are our questions. There's a lot of literature out there on it, but, but I was really looking at just the, the basic Air Force instruction and what that means for these cyber, cyber capabilities. But I think that the, the, one of the bigger issues that comes up is this idea of legal technical training. Um, it's one thing to know the law of armed conflict and to be able to apply it. Um, it's another thing to understand the architecture of networks and the architecture of IT systems and how all this works um, and, and be able to apply the law of armed conflict to those systems. Because I think that these um, reviewers are going to have to ask some very sophisticated questions to the people that are designing these capabilities. Um, they're going to have to ask, you know, is this sufficiently targetable? Will it only affect the power grid next to the military base that you're trying to shut down? Or is this likely to spread all over the world and cause mass chaos? Um, and so I think that, that there is a, 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 an issue right now for most militaries that are going to do this sort of legal review as to whether or not they have the technical capability um, within their legal staff to, to actually make this legal review meaningful. And that's all I got. Thank you.